Welcome to the Mecca Hills at the northern edge of the Salton Trough here in Southern California. And we're standing pretty much as close as you can locate it here at ground level, right on the San Andreas Fault here in the Mecca Hills. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Uh, today what we're going to do in this video is explore the Mecca Hills in several segments. There's some fantastic geology on the road up here through Box Canyon headed out to Interstate 10. Um, we'll look at some of the folding that is produced by the interplay between two adjacent faults. We'll look at some fault exposures and we'll look at the rocks as well and piece together that story a little bit. Um, sometimes when I brought students here in the past, they're a little disappointed uh, that when they get to the San Andreas Fault, it's, it's not more dramatic. Remember that the San Andreas Fault is a major plate boundary. It's a major structure. And so it's more of a zone than a discrete fault that you can go and put your finger on. But it runs through this region, more or less headed to the northwest, offsetting uh, the Palm Springs formation and some other uh, Pliocene age, or I think maybe even Pleistocene age uh, deposits here on the, on the west side. So let's start with a diagram here. And this is right out of the Roadside Geology of Southern California book. So I'll be sure to put a reference to it in there. But what we can see here is uh, a diagram showing the San Andreas Fault. So this is a block diagram, three-dimensional. Here's the San Andreas Fault with this left side, the west side shifting to the left or to the northwest. And then there's another fault that's a little further up the canyon called the Painted Canyon Fault. And in between these two faults, the rocks are being compressed just a little bit. So the plate boundary here is not perfectly parallel to the plate motion. It's a little bit oblique, and that results in a little bit of compression of the rocks, which produces some of the folding we're gonna see here up in the Mecca Hills and in Box Canyon. Uh, so it's the, the, the rocks being squeezed just a little bit between these two adjacent strike slip faults that produces some of the structures that we're gonna see as we go up through Box Canyon. So, um, so let's do it. Let's go ahead and head up Box Canyon. It's a great scenic drive. Um, there's some great exposures along the way. And let's go take a look at some of this fantastic geology here in the Mecca Hills. Okay, here's our first cool geologic feature going up Box Canyon in the Mecca Hills. This one's a little subtle, so I'll be sure to annotate this uh, part of the video so you can tell what's going on. But you'll notice there's the beds in the lower part of this escarpment are light gray. And you can see their dip, that they're dipping somewhat gently or moderately uh, to the left, which is to the west. And then as you look at the rocks up above, the more beige colored rocks, it's a little subtle, but they're dipping not quite as steeply. So between these two, there's a break between the in the dip between the two rocks. So what we have here is an angular unconformity. The idea here is that these lower rocks, which are older, were deposited horizontally. They were tilted at some time thereafter. Then they were eroded before these rocks were deposited, and then they were tilted again. And so we've got a very subtle but noticeable and, and pretty significant angular unconformity. And this is all in the Palm Springs formation, which I believe is a Pleistocene age uh, unit in here, mostly sands and some mudstones in there. So our first cool feature here, uh, an angular unconformity, a little more subtle, but hopefully you can pick that out. You should see that the lower lighter colored rocks are dipping a little bit more steeply than the ones above. So let's head back into the car and up the road. Here's a nice little fold in these sandstone and mudstone units. You can see the fold looks like a smile. It's what we call a syncline. So when it's curved upwards into this shape by compression, uh, it's known as a syncline or a synform. 
Um, and sometimes you actually get to see the hinge or the axis of the fold where it changes direction. Other times folds are a little more subtle where you just see beds tilted, you know, in one direction on one side uh, and in another direction on the other side. You can see on this side of that fold, we've got some fins of rock that are nearly vertical and those run all along this section here. Uh, but if you can maybe see way down here, the beds are actually horizontal. So there's another fault or structure down there that's changing uh, the dip of the fault. The rocks up here, even though I've said they're mostly sandstone and mudstone, there are some conglomerate layers as well. And you can see that pretty nicely here on this slab that's fallen off the wall where you can see some of the gravel layers of granite, uh, maybe some metamorphics in there as well. So it does contain, it's probably mostly sandstone, um, mudstone would be the next most prevalent, but there are some conglomerate layers in this unit as well. And here's a great view of these layers, just nearly vertical or at least steeply dipping to the north here. So let's head back on up the road and see what we can see as we head a little bit further east in the Mecca Hills. So a bit further up the canyon here in the Mecca Hills and just right off the road is this wonderful exposure of a fault plain. So this is actually the surface that the rocks were being grinded across during movement on one of these faults. So this fault is oriented nearly vertically in the cliff face here. You can see that it's cutting this conglomerate and sandy unit in the Palm Springs formation. And the surface of the fault has actually been polished. That's why it's a little bit white. It actually has a mineralized coating on the outside. We can also see that there's some lines running across the fault. So we can see that the lines, which are known as slicken lines, run nearly perfectly horizontally across the face of this fault. And that, of course, indicates which way the fault actually shifted uh, during the last faulting event. So these rocks were being shoved laterally or horizontally. That makes this a strike slip fault. Um, so pretty impressive. You can also s probably hopefully see that it's a little bit corrugated that as I look up the fault plane, it undulates a little bit going up. It's not perfectly planar, but a little bit warped, if you will. Might be able to see it a little better like that. Maybe if I turn the camera like this. Yeah, maybe you can see some of the corrugations a little bit better there. Um, we can see some of the clasts sticking out of the rock here, protruding uh, into the fault. Sometimes along these surfaces, you might see sheared clasts, clasts that are actually broken in half uh, by the fault. This rock is probably soft enough and grainy enough that most of the fault movement occurred around some of the particles rather than through them. It just depends on how well cemented uh, the rock is uh, in place. So pretty awesome showing us which way it moved. This is definitely a strike slip fault. Um, we can actually see the contact with the adjacent wall here. So this is where this side has been pushed out relative to that side. Um, so it appears like it might be a left lateral strike, strike slip fault, but we would want to look closely. It's, it's more likely right lateral because that's the dominant tectonics we see here with the San Andreas and other associated faults. One way you might be able to do that sometimes is to look for kinematic indicators, look for um, little grains or fibers that sometimes develop on these mineralized surfaces. And typically it's smooth in one direction and rough in the other. And that indicates which way um, the fault moved. It'll be smooth in the direction that it moved. Uh, for my money, I'm seeing enough sort of like weathering of the surface here. I don't think, at least right now, just armchair quarterbacking, I can tell exactly uh, which way it moved based on the the little kinematic indicators I'm seeing here, but nonetheless, pretty awesome. A really very well uh, displayed, great example of a fault plane. 
and the slickened lines and the surface is sometimes called a uh, slickened side that surface where the fault plane is exposed good stuff here in the mecca hills So if you come far enough through Box Canyon to where the topography starts to open up a little bit, uh, you arrive at the rocks that the sedimentary rocks we've been looking at that have been folded uh, in between the fault system and the most common rocks in the Mecca Hills. You finally arrive at the rocks that they're sitting on top of. That's this zone of darker, harder rocks that we see down here. Uh, so let's take a look at these here. These are very different. These rocks are Cretaceous in age. And there's a nice piece here to look at. You can see that it's, they're quite uh, layered. So they break into layers, uh, but they're also quite shiny and crystalline. So these are schists. This is actually called the Oracopia schist. And these are again, Cretaceous in age. So these schists then form more or less the basement rocks, the oldest rocks you can find in this little part of California. So here's some more of them down here. You can see some of the, the shiny surfaces with the micas there. Uh, and then let's get you to a good spot where you can see the, the foliation really nicely. I think this is pretty good in here. You can see the, the layering running through. Uh, that's a little better in there running through this this metamorphic rock this schist so this forms the uh, basement rocks in the area like i said that these um younger sediment rocks sit on top of and in places you can see it's actually folded uh, there's a little bit of a fold in here so these metamorphic schists have under, undergone quite a bit of a deformational history as well uh, here's another little sort of crinkled fold in this vein uh, another a little hard with the sun another little one in here um, so there are some quartz veins running through it like you can see right here and then looking across the road and the wash the most pronounced thing there is you can actually see the contact where the sediments lie directly on top of these schists and so that makes that contact then an unconformity and a specific type of unconformity known as a non-conformity where we have crystalline rocks in this case schists directly beneath the sedimentary rocks that lie above so great example there of a non-conformity uh, and it's even more pronounced color wise if you look over here the dark rocks are the schist and then the bedded sediments sitting up above here at shavers well so pretty fantastic the mecca hills is just a wonderland of uh, geologic structures features great geologic history um, and i'll probably have to come back some other time because there's so many places i didn't get to like painted canyon and ladder canyon and there's just all sorts of fun places to explore but thanks for joining me here in the Mecca Hills, looking at the fantastic structures, all the great geologic features. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for your support. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.